I remember watching it for the first time. I had a really rough childhood and <clears throat> my dad, one of the only good memories I have with my dad was sharing Star Wars. And he showed it to me and I loved it and it was our thing. And so I've been chasing that nostalgic high ever since. And when it came to Nathan being old enough to watch them, like I was counting down the days until I could show my kids Star Wars and have that moment with him. And lucky for me, he became obsessed and it became one of his autistic special interests. So our whole life is Star Wars. And I was lucky enough to be able to bring him to see a, a Star Wars movie. It was the last one that came out on opening night. And I never got to do that. So it was like the magic of that. I don't even think I remembered the movie when I walked out the doors, but he used to always ask me, can I wear my Darth Vader mask? Can I like to places? Can I wear my Darth Vader mask? And it was never appropriate. But then I said, <laughs> guess what? We're going to see Star Wars. And he said, can I wear my Darth Vader mask? And I said, of course you can. And he, the look on his face, he was like, what do you mean? <laughs> so he's here's my little nugget, all dressed up like Darth Vader with his little Kylo Ren bear that plays the Imperial March, ready to go. We get into the theater, we go up to the concession stand, and I'm like, what do you have that's Star Wars? And they have all kinds of special this. I was like, I'll take one of everything. Give me all of it. And we get there, and we sit in the seats, and it was like such a communal experience to see that, like, I talk about this all the time, how much I love going to see a movie in the movie theater. This was on such a different level. We had, I remember the guy next to us was by himself and he left his collector cup for us. And then there was two brothers that were next to us. One was special needs and the care that went into the, the one brother taking care of his other brother and being like hyping him up and getting so excited to see the movie. And then the theater was packed. We got the last two seats. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, and I'm looking at Nathan and I'm looking at the screen and then all of a sudden, a long time ago in a galaxy mm -hmm. far away comes on the screen and I lost it. And I was sobbing for five minutes because I couldn't believe that I got to live this way because I'd always want, I've goosebumps talking about mm -hmm. it because I had always wanted that. And that's the power that is Star Wars. And then we were lucky enough not to stray from the movies too much, but we were lucky enough that one of my biggest dreams was that I wanted to take him to Disney to Galaxy's Edge before he was too old to not enjoy it. And shame on me for thinking that would ever happen because at 37, it was magic to me. Like we went and made our own lightsabers and that experience, again, I was hysterical because I was there. I was immersed. I was a Jedi or a Sith or whatever. And I watched my child get to live this dream of his and at the end of the experience they yoda's voice comes over the speaker and he's giving you a pep talk the lights dim down and they have all the lightsabers turn on and they raise their sabers and it's it was like life-changing like becky ann said like just that moment to watch my kid get to do that and then i got to do it after him and i thought oh we just did it so it won't be a big deal and it was a huge deal it was like a massive deal like putting that together and, and getting that moment myself too so I think that for me, Star Wars is, it, it's nostalgia, but not just for movies. It's nostalgia for the magic and the experience and all the things that came along with it, because it's not something that people just are like, oh, let me put a movie on and watch it by myself. It's always with friends or it's with family or there's a memory attached. And I think witches or no witches, that's the magic that is Star Wars.